Hi everyone, uh, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so in the last lesson, we talked about the uh, logistic growth model, which is used for modeling um, various types of populations. And we used the example of a uh, cell population. Um, and I'll sort of give you guys like a brief overview. So if you remember, we have, we have some growth parameter R, and we also have a carrying capacity parameter K. And sort of, and like the way the model works is that um, the growth starts out being um, almost exponential. And as the uh, population gets closer and closer to the carrying capacity, um, the growth slows down. And then by the time the population actually reaches the carrying capacity, um, the growth actually uh, goes to zero. Because uh, when, when x is um, equal to k, uh, this will be 1. So then 1 minus 1 is 0. And the uh, entire growth rate will be 0 times uh, x times r. Um, so that's kind of the basics of the model. So in this lesson, we're going to be um, coding this into Python and uh, simulating it. Um, okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we do, like usual, is uh, import our uh, libraries that we're going to be using. So we import NumPy, SNP, uh, matplotlib. Um, I'm use I, I need to have this line because uh, for some reason when I got the new Mac OS update, I just have to have this line for it to work. And then um, this is our actual uh, library um, for doing the integration. So we're going to be using the uh, odint function uh, from scipy.integrate. Um, okay, so then once we have that, the first thing we do is define our initial conditions. Um, so we call this y0. And this is just a, a convention to call the uh, initial condition um, array y0. Even though our actual name for the variable is x, I'm just kind of doing this because um, it's a convention in, uh, in differential equation modeling. So we call it uh, y0, and um, we're going to start off with one cell. So the initial condition for x will be 1. Um, so just uh, note that, note, notate that uh, there. So, um, OK. And then so the next thing we're going to do is uh, define the time points we're going to be solving over. So we're going to do this with um, numpy.linspace. And we're going to start at uh, time 0 and go to time 500. And we're going to get um, 1,000 uh, 1, time points in that space. So this is going to be the uh, set of time points we're going to be, um, we're going to be solving the, uh, the ODE over. Um, OK, so the next thing to do is define our params. So remember, we have, we have two parameters here. So we have R, which is our uh, growth parameter. And then um, K is our carrying capacity parameter. Um, so for now, we're going to just make R um, 0 0.05. But like I usually tell you guys, um, I think it's a good idea to like play around with the parameters, try out different ones, uh, see what happens when you change them around. I think that's a good way to um, learn more about the model and gain intuition. But for now, we'll just make R um, 0 0.05, and we'll make K um, make K uh, 100,000. Um, and then we're just going to store these in an array um, called params, just you know, uh, and you could have actually put the values, like I usually tell you guys, could have put the values like right in here. But um, I think it's easier to like visualize things this way and just kind of uh, keep track of everything. Um, so yeah, we'll just define our parameters here and then and then put them in this uh, params array here. Um, so the next thing to do is actually um, write the function that we're gonna actually be passing into the um, ODE solver. So we're gonna call this um, sim, like we usually call it. And it's going to take um, three arguments. It's going to take uh, the variables argument, which is where we're going to pass in the initial condition. <clears throat> and then also on every iteration, the current levels of the variables will be passed in here. Um, but we'll start off passing the uh, initial condition in here. And then it's going to take the uh, t, the time point we're solving over. Um, so this, this variable here, t, I'm going to pass this in here. And then the uh, params array. So that, this is where we're going to pass in uh, the params. So then the first thing we do inside this function is just define everything again locally. So we're going to define x as, um, as the first and only element of the variables array. So as you guys have seen in like other, other videos I've done on uh, ODE modeling, sometimes we have more than one variable, actually most of the time. Um, so this model is kind of like unusually simple in the sense that it only has uh, one variable we're modeling. But most of the time there would be like more than one uh, more than one variable in here, but um, it's kind of like extra simple with this model because we only have uh, we only have the one variable x. So we're just going to assign x here locally as the uh, first and only element of uh, the variables array, 
And then we're also going to assign our parameters um, locally within this function. So R is going to be um, the first element of the params array, and K is going to be the second element of uh, the params array. Um, and then, so the next thing we do is just write down the actual ODE. So let me just make sure I'm going to get this right. Okay, so it's uh, dx dt equals um, r times x times 1 minus x over k. Did I get that right? Yeah, and since we've defined all these things locally, this will be able to be evaluated with no problem. And then, so the last thing we do in this function is just to uh, return, um, we just return the um, the uh, actual ODE here. Um, and yeah, so normally in the other systems we've been doing, they've had like, they've had more than one um, ODE, but um, again, this model is like especially simple. So uh, we only have, we only have one ODE here. Um, but we put it in a uh, array when we're returning it anyway. Um, yeah. So now we're ready to actually um, pass this into uh, into the solver and actually uh, run the solver and integrate the uh, ODE and, and solve. So we're going to do this um, by saying y equals, and again, y, even though I know this is a bit confusing because in this case, our actual name of the variable is x, but I'm just doing this for convention because normally we'd have we'd have more than one variable getting returned in here. And it's just in ODE modeling, it's kind of called, um, the output's kind of called Y for like convention. So I know it's confusing in this case, but I'm kind of sticking to the convention anyway, even though our actual um, our actual name of the variable is X, usually the output, which will contain usually more than one variable is just, uh, just usually called Y. So I'm just kind of sticking with that. And then, so we're gonna call the ODE int function. Um, and then the first argument is the name of our own function that we wrote to put everything in. So in this case, it's sim. So we just put the name of this function for the uh, first argument. Then the second argument is the um, initial condition. So y0, which we defined up here, which basically says we're starting off with uh, with one cell. And then next we have uh, the time points we're solving over, which we defined up here and we're passing in here. And then, so this part, a um, little bit confusing syntax, but we're gonna say args equals uh, parentheses, params, comma. And so this is where we're passing in um, this params array with the, the values of R and K we're gonna be using. Um, okay, so after we get our output, um, we can actually uh, plot the results. So um, say plt dot plot T our time points, and then we want um, the values of X at each time point. So we're gonna say Y, um, every row in, uh, so this, this colon here is saying every row in the uh, first column, column index zero, the first column. And I know this is a little bit confusing because like I keep saying, like we only have one variable in this model, but um, this sort of matrix notation actually makes more sense when you have, uh, if you've seen like some of my other videos, when you have a system with more than one variable you're modeling, then then this notation matrix uh, makes more sense. I guess it's a little bit confusing because we only actually have, uh, like this is actually the only column in this uh, matrix. But in other cases, we might have we might have more than one column. So we'd, we want all the rows for whatever column, uh, whatever column the variable we're trying to plot is in, if that makes sense. And then um, put our labels in there. So we'll label the x-axis uh, time. Uh, label the y-axis um, cells, and then plt.show. So let me just make sure I have everything okay. And by the way, sorry if I went through this kind of fast. Um, I'm sort of assuming that you guys have seen like my more introductory videos on ODE modeling. Um, so I'm kind of assuming a little bit of experience with this already. But if you haven't, I'm going to put a link in the description uh, to the uh, first the first video I did on ODE modeling where I sort of go uh, a little bit slower and more more in depth, but uh, yeah, going a little bit fast here because I'm sort of uh, hoping people have already seen that. Um, but okay, so let's run it and hopefully it'll work.
Whoops. Okay, okay, so. Uh, my mistake, so I forgot, um, we need the capital K here. So we should make sure that was only, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, okay, so this is what the uh, logistic growth model looks like when it's plotted. So as you can see, we sort of talked about this um, from, you know, like an intuitive standpoint, how the population starts off growing uh, exponentially. And then as it gets um, closer and closer to the carrying capacity, the growth um, slows down. And uh, as we get closer and closer to the carrying capacity, it keeps slowing down, keeps slowing down, keeps slowing down. And once we actually reach the carrying capacity, which in this case was um, was 100,000, the growth actually uh, stops. Um, yeah, so that's so this is like I said, a very simple model, but it's also like very widely used, so definitely good to know. And I think this is also a good model for us to start doing uh, some more advanced uh, topics on. So I'm going to hopefully, I'm hoping to make some more videos about um, the logistic growth model, covering like more advanced things, like getting into some parameter estimation and things like that. So I think it's good to sort of teach those advanced things with kind of a, a simple model and like something that's intuitive. Oh, and also before I forget, um, yeah, so like usual, my code will be on GitHub. Uh, so I'm going to put a link um, in the description to my GitHub if you guys want to download uh, download and run this code. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's it for now. So um, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.